what I'm doing tonight, um, gutting the entire X-Max, I've now moved away from obviously all the Traxxas equipment. So now I'm on to new batteries, right? So I have a couple Z9000s over there. Um, I have two SMC uh, 9400s that I think are like 75C or something. And I just, I don't even know how I got them because they've been out of stock everywhere. But on uh, Buddy RC, I got the king of batteries, I think, that'll fit into the X-Max in the, the bashing 11,000s. Um, so this is exciting for me, um, even though I've never ran the X-Max on anything but stock electronics at this point. Um, but one of the, uh, I've had to switch out all my battery connectors, right? So I had to put QS8s or OS8s, QS8s, I think they're QS8s. I've seen it both ways online, but whatever. Um, I've had to put the QS8s on all of my other batteries. So I feel like I've gotten a relatively decent system down doing it. Um, and I see quite a few questions out there for people who um, don't know how to um, solder different, different ends on. And it, I'm just gonna adjust this here because I think it's not the best angle down just a little bit all right that might be better um a lot of people just you know they're intimidated by changing the connectors and to be honest with you i kind of was at first too um you know i mean i've soldered microchips and stuff before and i've worked on drones and i've obviously soldered things on those and um you know did controllers and and different things like that and i i thought to myself you know how hard could it really be i don't feel like taking all my stuff to a local hobby shop not that i don't mean you know, I don't, I don't want to give them business because I do. I buy parts there whenever I can because that's what keeps those guys in business and they're a big help to us out there. But, um, you know, this is just something I wanted to figure out how to do on my own. And I can't tell you it was excruciating the first time. Um, this is the first solder tip that I was attempting to use. Nowhere near enough heat transfer. And this is the one that came on this gun while soldering station. Uh, I got the Xtronic model 3020. Uh, I guess I'll link it. Uh, I guess people say, oh, link it in the, in the you know, the description below or whatever. I guess that's what I'll do. Um, this thing was like 60 bucks and it's been awesome. But the tip that came on it was this crappy little dinky guy um, that <laughs> just didn't have enough heat transfer. And I'm telling you, uh, using that for six hours, trying to do it and failing, I literally wanted to give up. I was I was ticked, I was frustrated, and I said, listen, I will just give somebody $100 to solder all my connectors for me. Well, that was in the heat of the moment. The next day, I started thinking, you know, why am I having the issue? It shouldn't be this hard. My soldering iron obviously gets well hot enough. It's a 70 watt station. You know, everybody out there is talking about how easy it is. So, first thing I did, why tip? I got a new tip set um, on Amazon for like 10 bucks. And my gosh, what a difference this has made. So follow me, I guess, um, while I do this. Anybody who's been screwed up at soldering before, even you professionals out there that are bored and want to watch my stupid video and uh, tell me how crappy of a job I do, please, I'm up for that too. So first things first, um, I cut... Let me switch it around. Um, I cut the connector off as close to uh, this connector as I can. I don't see an easy way to just get it out of the connector. These ones I don't think have a removable sheath or whatever. So I just cut one at a time, please, folks. Um, that's was, um, you know, obvious. I think it's relatively common sense, but it might not be for some uh, that don't do this at all. So, and I didn't mean that insultingly, but cut one side off. Um, and then typically what I'll do is go ahead and strip it um, first. So it's obviously 10 gauge wire. I don't know if you can see the description on there on my uh, strippers, but uh, I did a little bit more than I typically do on that. I typically don't do that much removal of the wire casing there, but it'll work. Um, now, before I cut the other side and... Um, you know, start working on it because I'm going to work on the positive side first. It doesn't make a difference, I guess, which direction you want to go, positive or negative, but I'll do the positive side first. Um, what I do is I just take a little bit of electrical tape 
And those of you in the community know I accidentally arced one of my batteries um, not that long ago, and it didn't damage it, thankfully, but um, I always wrap this side. Um, I just wrap it around so when I'm working on the other side, if I happen to get a little bit loose-handed or something and let the other end dangle and hit this side, it's not going to arc and scare the bejesus out of me like it did the first time because there was um, a relative amount of uh, fireworks the first time that I did it. So there we go. That side's capped. Now I'm going to chop this side. I really bitched that up that time. It's not going to make a difference. All right. That's a better amount. That's how much I typically like to do. You don't need much. Um, obviously, you really, really don't need much off the end there. Uh, but first things first, I do pre-tin uh, these wires just a little bit, and I do use a little bit of flux. So um, I'll just take the wire in here move it around, um, wipe off any excess because you really don't need much. Um, and this is the, the rosin flux that I use. I think you guys can see that. Um, so this was like five bucks on Amazon too, so whatever. Um, and then basically I don't even put wire directly uh, or soldering iron directly to wire. When I'm pre-tinning that, I literally just get a nice little pull of it on the iron itself. And then I kind of just let the let the rosin suck it in so um when i'm moving it around here and it will build up on one side but you can just kind of you know move it around um you know it's, it's you know it just gets nice and wet and um you know you can just move the solder around the wire and you don't need a ton to pre -tin. um i just use a little bit just enough so when you get it pressed into the connector it'll create a, a decent joint so there you go pre tin wire good enough for me okay after everything that i solder i always this has a nice little convenient you know cleaning cup in here so um i just clean off the tip because that's the best heat transfer that you can get is with a clean soldering tip i learned that a long time ago um so here is my QS8, right? So this is this is your, um, I guess what would be considered your female end, which is the battery end um, always. But what I like to do, just because when you're when you're soldering to these, um, you will generate a lot of heat, and it doesn't really have anywhere to go when you're working with just this piece. Um, so what I like to do is actually connect them together. And what it does, it gives you a little bit more conductor there uh, for the heat to transfer into these, which you're not going to be using this side. It's just essentially helping not to melt the plastic uh, because it's pulling some of the heat away from what you're doing. Um, so I usually just push these two together and then I'm ready to go. Now, obviously, you want to make sure that once you push them together, you realize what side you're working on, which actually is relatively easy because the female looks like this it has this ribbed part whereas this one doesn't so just push them together and you are good to go now i usually and always check polarity obviously um i said i'm going to be working on the positive side first uh which positive is up here uh, i have this little i don't know this little i, I thought it was kind of gimmicky at first but i swear i use this thing all the time now um just this little kind of handheld vice so I just crank this connector down inside of this vice leave it here that's a pretty poor job of it leave it here and then obviously I can put as much down pressure as I want in here it's not going anywhere I'm checking polarity again positive on top and we're good to go uh, when I'm doing the first side what I what I typically do is I, I just like to heat up this connector um, just so, I mean, it takes the solder better. It stops you from getting a cold sort or a solder joint or anything. And I'm going to pre-tin this end. And I don't, I don't use any kind of flux on this end. I don't, I don't think it's exactly necessary because once you get this hot, you can really get the solder to make a nice little well in there uh, to press your wire into. 
um, it's, it's a relatively easy process. So I'm just going to get this hot for a couple more seconds. Keep the tip away from the plastic or else you will melt it if you're touching it, obviously. Uh, these QS8s are pretty heavy duty plastic, but um, I've touched a few and melted them before and it can get a little bit sticky. Um, heat it up for a couple more seconds. And then essentially what I'm gonna do is just lay the soldering iron in here. Get a nice little bit of solder. Move it down to the connector. Get a nice little well in here. And as you can see, it will stick in there rather nicely. Um, move it around, get a nice little well in there. Just so when you press that wire down and, you know, I mean, it's not a ton, I guess, but um, it's a decent amount. And then once you heat it back up, you'll be good to go. Now I'm gonna clean this off again. Then what I'm gonna do, um, the, <laughs> the color scheme for my X-Max is going to be orange and black. So I have orange shrink tubing, um, which I think looks kind of cool, but I think it's actually kind of cheap and crappy because um, every other good heat shrink tube that I've used is two times. This is three times uh, shrinkage. Uh, so it's a three to one ratio or one to three ratio, I guess, whatever direction you want to go with it. Um, and it, it, I don't know, it, it just doesn't seem to work as well as the normal black stuff that we would typically use, I guess. Um, don't forget to put this on, um, before you do, uh, your first connection. I've done that before and having to unsolder it sucks. So, um, this is just your little plastic insulator that goes over. So you're not going to accidentally arc anything off of your batteries. Uh, I do use insulation and this by the way, um, which is probably maybe a little bit overkill, but it doesn't really matter to me. So I just slide this on. Uh, this is the side that goes into the connector. Uh, so I just slide that on and I do slide it on this side also, um, and just pull it way back. And that's still out of the way. And then the heat shrink. And now I will heat this back up again a little bit. Um, just because it's easier to work with when this side of the connector is hot. Um, it just, it makes everything a lot easier. So I'll heat it up just for a couple more seconds. And then I'm going to get this nice and... Uh, Nice and permeable again, so it's, you know, that shiny little running uh, pool of solder like it was before. And I did not get this solder, or the connector, extremely hot this time, so I'm going to have to use the bigger surface area here. And then I'll just take this over, and when it's really hot, I'll just press it, right? So it's stuck there now. Now... Trust me, that's not where the joint's gonna stay. Um, it's it's obviously just stuck there for holding purposes right now. It's not going to, uh, that's not going to be how it's obviously finished. But they're both hot. I can press it in, um, heating up the wire here just a little bit. Um, all the solder experts out there tell you, you know, they like it, you know, they like your solder iron hot. Um, so you can work fast. Faster you can get out of these connectors, the better. Uh, but that's pressed in there. I mean, it's not real stuck, but it's stuck enough that I can work with it. So then what I'm going to do is just keep the solder iron on this. And I'm just going to start getting solder inside. Moving it inside of the connector. Getting it down. around the wire. And as you guys can see, it's a nice little, a nice little pull there. Now, you don't wanna have it built up outside of the connector. Now, there are times that I use <laughs> a little bit too much solder. I, I, I don't know, I just, I think the, the better the joint is um, with a little bit more solder, the better. So 
I'll get it hot again here. As it's getting hot, I'm just pressing that wire a little bit more. I just want it down in that original well of solder as much as I can. And then I'll glaze this stuff over a little bit so it's not sticking outside of the connector. So, I mean, it's stuck, right? It's not going anywhere. It's connected. It's pressed down into that initial well. Um, now, granted, that one's the, probably the, go figure, the least pretty of the joints that I've done since I've been doing this. Um, obviously, it had to be because it's on video, right? So <laughs> it couldn't be a nice, pretty one um, right away. So then I just take this heat shrink, slide it over. It'll start to constrict, obviously, a little bit on that side because it's hot. And I just have a little butane torch. I start to work it a little bit. Just get it nice and tight around the ends there. Make sure it's nice and tight on the wire. God, this place is a mess. I'm sorry, it's not going to look good on video, but whatever. Um, so there we are. We have that first one done, first side. And then the beauty of it is, basically, just pull this out, flip it around, and reclamp. So now we can go on to this side. Obviously, this is before, a little bit of rosin. Nice little pool of solder on the end of the soldering iron there. Use a little bit more. there I can move. Pretend enough. All right, not a ton, but it's enough. All right. Now, the difference in this one is I don't want to heat from underneath anymore because I don't want to melt the heat shrink or burn it that's underneath. So this one you're kind of relegated to doing it on the top, which still gets good heat transfer, just not quite as, as fast as it was doing it from underneath. Um, but it still works. I mean, it's efficient enough. So just get a nice little well of... Solder in here, you might have to coax it in there a little bit because it's going to be a little bit colder than it was before. But it'll work. There we go. Okay. Nice little bit of it there. It'll work. Forget the heat shrink. Now, obviously, this one, because I accidentally stripped more of the wire than I wanted to, I'm probably going to put this a little bit further into the connector. Um, just because I, I don't want, I want as least amount of the wire showing as possible. Not that it's not going to be insulated, but um, just for practical purposes, uh, the less wire that's out of the connector, I think, the better for me. Um, so again, I am going to just heat this stuff back up, get it into a nice liquid well-like state here. And this is kind of kind of tricky at times, especially when yeah, I'm gonna have to go less dominant hand and press it with my dominant hand because I am not ambidextrous by no means. See, I didn't get there fast enough. 
doesn't help that to get this as long as I want it to be. It's all right. That'll do. It's there. I'm gonna heat it up though. Just press it in. It's not really into the solder as much as I wanted it to be, but it'll be good with some heat here. I'm going to have to hold this on here a bit longer than I would ordinarily want to. Um, just because I kind of screwed that up, but it's all good. So it's hot anyways. Um, I have a little bit too much rosin on there. I'm just going to start working this down around. I'm getting it in the sides here. Obviously it's still heating up. Oh, this one will not be quite as pretty looking to start, but we'll get it there. So it's there, and then I'm just going to take it, I'm going to work some of this stuff down there, and it will heat. It'll stick. Just keep pressing it. Yeah, it's sinking into the stuff that I put onto the connector now, uh, which is what you want. So now I'm just going to get a little bit more here. Make a nice little pull there and done. Again, go figure. The times that I do this on video is my worst looking ones yet, but it is what it is. So obviously it's tight. It's not going anywhere. It's still warm too, but it's it's not going anywhere. Um, so then again, slide the heat shrink to it. see one problem here but hopefully it doesn't cause a failure on this little insulation tube we'll see but usually yeah it's still really warm what I'll do is I'll just take that slide it there and I'll take like just one of my stupid Traxxas bits or whatever oh shit well sorry not family friendly no more let me just pull this apart actually it's easier sitting on the flat side I'll just set it down and press that. Oh, it did. It went past the excess solder. So there you have it. Um, it's sunk in. The connector's good, in my opinion. It's never going to go anywhere. Um, it should do just fine. Um, this is the other one I did. So... Here are two QS8 bashing Gen's Ace 11,000 mAh 4 cell 100C batteries uh, that will be ready for X-Max um, when I ever get the damn thing done. Uh, but it is what it is. So uh, I know this video is lengthy, uh, almost 30 minutes, um, but it is what it is. Uh, fast forward to many of the parts that you want to see. I suck at this, but like I said, this is noob to noob channel now. Um, it is what it is. I hope you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. And I don't know. I guess I'll see you next time if there is a next time. I don't know. I doubt this will be my only video, but you'll get bashing videos of the X-Max uh, when I'm actually uh, done with it. And maybe I'll do some other upgrade videos. Uh, I have a lot of stuff that I'm into uh, with it here. So until next time, thanks guys. See ya.